and welcome to News in Depth. I'm Ramirshi Jairam with the details. Thank you for joining us. Here's what's making the headlines. Opposition leader Barrett Jagdeo calls on the government to resign and for President Granger to announce the date for elections. His calls come on the heels of Chief Justice Roxon George Wilch's ruling on Thursday, which stated that the no-confidence vote was validly passed in the National Assembly. How long can a country operate without a cabinet? And when they're, they, they seem hell-bent on delaying the elections, we have seen a statement from the government yesterday which says it's basically business as usual. We respect the Chief Justice's ruling, but it's business as usual. Clearly, they do not respect the ruling of the court because it cannot be business as usual if the Chief Justice just ruled that the no confidence motion has been validly passed, and secondly, that that triggered an immediate resignation of the cabinet, and that elections have to be held in 90 days. That cannot be interpreted as business as usual. So that's what we got from our government last night. And then the government has signaled its intention to appeal the matter all the way to the Caribbean Court of Justice and said they will remain in office until the final ruling is determined. In the court on Thursday, the Chief Justice also ruled that former Alliance for Change parliamentarian Charandas Passard was not qualified to be an elected member of the National Assembly. This was due to Passard having dual citizenship status. GWI blames GPL for water woes in Barbies. Here are details in this report. The contributing factor which affected the smooth supply of water in Barbies for the past weeks has been attributed to electrical and mechanical challenges and voltage fluctuation by the Ghana Power and Light. This was revealed at a press conference today at the New Amsterdam Town Hall by officials of the water company. Managing Director Dr. Van West Charles noted that without power, GWI is unable to supply water and cannot use solar power because it will not drive the majority of their pumps. He explained that several areas from the New Amsterdam to number 6 to 9, villages have been affected as a result. Generation from and the quality of the power coming in from GPL has not been at the optimum level to, for our uh, infrastructure to respond. That is the pumps within the pump stations. Hence, uh, we have the, the readings which clearly shows the voltage fluctuations um, way below what is required for the pumps to effectively function in these nine pump stations and also at the treatment plants. As part of our solution, at least with respect to the treatment plants, we have been able to place generators uh, at New Amsterdam and at Port Moran treatment plants. It is no secret that GWI does not have all of the generators that are required in case of outages coming from GPL. The director added that resolution should be made early next week, adding that they are monitoring the problem and working on all available options to address this issue. He also addressed the issue of increased water rates. The PUC arrangement, the Public Utilities Commission, which sets the rates for all utilities and other entities, um, are the ones that would write off and sign off as to when the, where the rates are from time to time. We had a number of public hearings with the PUC and many public, um, many citizens made their representations to the PUC. Uh, GWI made its representation to the PUC at that time and eventually we came out with uh, an order by the PUC in terms of the adjustment to the rates. A special rate will be charged for pensioners at a sum of $740.
Over the past two weeks, residents were protesting on the water failures from the Ghana Water Incorporated. Residents complained about the water rates, water discoloration, and a low water distribution. More news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Hey, look at that. Let me go with the te techie boots. Boots? No, mama, mama. I ain't gonna get a lack of teeth in them big stinky 30 second boots. Plus, it can be more cheaper online. And then got my favorite color, pink. Let me go on. Online shopping. Cheaper, faster, better. Pass back. Caribbean rice from the lush rice fields of Guyana straight to your home. Caribbean rice, our people, our rice. Welcome back. Armed bandits escaped with over $400,000 after a home invasion in Bloomfield Village. Here is more in this report. A Bloomfield Village family is traumatized after their home was invaded and robbed last evening by armed and masked bandits. This newscast understands that the men were armed with a gun, cut last and dressed in black, when they ransacked the home of Mohammed Rahid, searching for valley webbles. They managed to escape with U.S. $2,000 and $40,000 in local currency, one laptop computer, and two cellular phones. Fortunately, no one was harmed during the robbery, but the family remains shaken. Police investigations are ongoing. 58-year-old Courtney Dominic of St. Stephen Street, Charleston, was today sentenced to five years in prison for a Tuesday's multi-million dollar drug bust in Charleston. The man and his female companion appeared in the Georgia Magistrate's Court this morning before Acting Chief Magistrate Shardell Isaacs Marcus. But Dominic took the rap and pleaded guilty to possession of 196 pounds of marijuana and 44 pounds of cocaine. His 23-year-old co-accused Ebony Craig of 17 Lamar Spring had the charges against her dismissed. This was after Kano Prosecutor Kimo Sandiford asked that the charge against Craig be discharged owing to the fact that the man had already entered a guilty plea. Dominic apologized for his action and stated that it was a bad choice he had made to take care of his children. On Tuesday, Kanu rang swoop down on the Charleston house where a search was executed on the premises and a minibus. Deputy Head of Kanu said the drugs arrived in the country from Colombia. The suspect was under surveillance for some time by the Drug Enforcement Agency. And here is our entertainment police, Samuel Khan, with the lighter side of the news.
Hey, this is your boy Sammy Welkan, the guy in the carnival lawn. Can you, can you tell me how you feel about being a part of the carnival? I feel amazing. I feel so honored to be a part of this. And I'm excited about it. I think it'll be phenomenal. So I'm feeling the vibes right now. How you feel about it, guy in the carnival? I feel great. I'm excited. Can't wait for it to happen. Start, get ready, day. Set up on start. Me three on the way. We lining up, ready to charge ahead. For what is not enough, I want you to jump up. Trouble come now. We headed to downtown. Get all of the railing. So much room on a trailing. Follow the big sun. Get ready to mash down. All in the stadium. The whole of the kingdom. Come down. Wow, Burbies was more than what I expected, I must say. Big up Suburbies to coming out tonight. Shell, 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 shell. It was good. We're going to be coming to Burbies for some more Ghana Carnival events. As we come close, we got a Juve that we want to do up in Burbies. We also got a big pool party that we want to do so. With that, we've come to the end of tonight's newscast. If you have a news story or a tip, you can contact us on 698-2500 or 666-4337. You can also visit our website, www.rdproductiongy.com, Facebook or Instagram at Royston Drake's Production for more details on these and other stories. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of News In Depth. I am Ramesh Jairan saying goodnight.